Hi, I'm Diane Canava. Welcome to Working Together for Hudson. With me are Gary Gassier with School Board and a very special guest, Superintendent of Schools, Dan Moulis. Welcome. He's going to help us today to find out what is happening at the school systems going on in Hudson because today is August 31st and uh, they have a nice big weekend coming up and before he, we let him go, he's going to share what's been happening for the last week or so over at um, SAU 81. So Gary, why don't you start us off with some local news? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, I'll, I'll be brief because I want to spend the most of the time with Dr. Moulis here. Um, so I just wanted to provide a couple of quick updates regarding the school board. So since the last time we had the show, we've had two meetings. Um, at the August 7th board meeting, we held a public hearing for a donation of a 15-person, 15 15-passenger 15 van that was donated by the Alvern trustees, um, which we then accepted that donation. Just wanted to publicly say thank you to them. That's a fantastic donation that the Alvern trustees support uh, Alvern and the, that community so much and have for many years. This is just the latest um, in a series of donations that they've made. Uh, we also voted on some projects at the CTE Center and did some staffing changes to accommodate uh, the demand that we are seeing from the students for various classes, um, which is great that we have such demand, which is uh, always good to see. Um, at the August 21st board meeting, um, we spoke about increasing the number of computers available at the elementary schools, and we voted to convert 12 vacant para positions to full-time paras from part-time in the hope that this will attract uh, more, more candidates to close a, a very needed gap. We still have many openings, um, but hopefully that will help. Um, and then, you know, we also uh, found it's always great that the state um, changed their adequacy funding, and we had $740,000 in adequacy aid that was unexpected. And um, we had a couple of options in front of us. We could have, you know, spent it on a project. We could have waited till the end of the year. Or what we decided to do was just automatically send it directly back to the taxpayer. So when you do get your tax bill later on in the year, um, whatever it is, it's 15 cents lower than it would have been uh, because of that unexpected revenue. So that's great. Both of these meetings um, will be, are able to be streamed and looked at on HCTV and the Facebook page, so do that. Um, we also discussed some staffing updates. And then a couple of key dates. September 28th, there's going to be a joint Board of Selectmen School Board uh, meeting at the Community Center at 6.30 on the 28th. And again, encourage residents to come. Um, this really isn't a televised event as much as it is an in-person event. Uh, you're going to come. You're going to get to talk to any members of either of the boards. You're going to have uh, the leaders of the town and leaders of the SAU will be there to answer really any questions that you may have. So encourage everybody to come to that. And then budget season's right around the corner, so for the school board, um, starting October 16th, followed by meetings on October 23rd, 25th, 30th, and a wrap-up on November 6th. So again, we encourage folks to participate in that. Um, that's an opportunity before anything gets voted on, before any changes are made, to come and tell us you know, where you think the money should be spent. Um, so that's a great opportunity. Um, and, you know, because Kara cannot be here, um, I'll also provide a quick Board of Selectmen update. Um, they as well had two meetings. At the August 8th meeting, um, the superintendent was there as they discussed closing Memorial Drive at the Hudson Middle School uh, during the school day. This will be similar to what is done at Library Street. Um, this will prevent traffic from being diverted by, uh, you know, Google Maps and ways through the school um, as a shortcut. So we'll actually close that road during the day. Um, we also, there was also a discussion about exploring the idea of having a solar farm at the West Road Landfill. I um, mean, just to be clear, this is not anything that says there will be a solar farm or we're looking to put a solar farm. It's literally step one of a very long process if we even want to explore the idea. Um, and then uh, the board also discussed the parameters they're giving to their department heads regarding the budget process. At the August 22nd meeting, um, there was a discussion around the feasibility study for the southern branch of the Circumferential Highway, uh, which would run from Lowell Road to Route 111. Um, and again, it's just a feasibility study, not breaking ground, not deciding it's going to be done. It's just a matter of should the study even be, be done. Um, and there was also a request to possibly add a donate button on the website for Benson Park. Um, 
Again, all meetings available on HCTV and the Facebook page. And the key date there, one additional date, uh, September 11th, the observation, the annual observation, which is a great event if you've never been. Uh, we'll be at Benson Park at the 9-11 Memorial on Monday, September 11th at 6.30 p.m. So that's all I have for an update. And so, um, you know, I'm just going to turn it over to the superintendent, and we'll start with um, just a very open-ended question. So how's the start of school year going? It's going very well. <laughs> it's been a great start. Uh, we welcome students back this week. We've had four days, uh, Monday through Thursday. Uh, no school for students tomorrow, um, but a uh, great start to the school year. We had three teacher workshop days last week on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, we welcomed uh, new teachers to new teacher orientation days Thursday and Friday, uh, the 17th and 18th the week prior. Uh, we have over uh, 60 teachers, educators that we've hired this year. Um, so a lot of hiring has occurred. Uh, along with welcoming uh, teachers and, and staff back last week, we also had important trainings that were conducted. Uh, we also had uh, school meet and greets at the different schools uh, where we welcome families and students to each of our, our buildings. It's uh, great to have the students back uh, this week. Uh, been out at Library Street School helping with uh, bus mm -hmm. arrival and bus dismissal <laughs> and traffic duty, and it's great to have uh, all of our students back um, had the opportunity to visit all six of the schools on Monday. A uh, lot of excitement, a lot of energy. Uh, it, it's just really great to have the students back in the schools, and uh, we're, we're getting into the, the school routine. It's great. Very good. That's awesome. Um, you, mentioned, uh, you mentioned 60 new teachers. Yes. So I know we have a lot of openings with the paras, obviously mm -hmm. crossing guards, lunch mm -hmm. monitors. There's a whole bunch of different things, but... Last year we went to the we went to the town and asked them for a pretty sizable teachers contract. Mm -hmm. um, is that a driver of are we in a better position than we were last year? Are you seeing any difference in number of candidates? Is is it are we getting the value for our money? Yes, no, that's uh, I, that's a great question and that's been asked quite a bit. Um, we are seeing a great uh, increase in uh, applicants in certain positions. Um, we're certainly seeing uh, retaining staff. Um, we recognized in working with the school board and Hudson Federation of Teachers, uh, we wanted to make our salaries competitive and commensurate with surrounding communities and we are seeing that effect. Um, there are some certain positions. I did bring a little informational flyer uh, today, um, and I brought it for uh, Hudson Old Home Days a couple of weeks ago. There are some specialized areas that we are still looking for hiring uh, candidates for certain teaching positions. Some of those are uh, four special education teaching positions, two at Alvern High School, two at Hudson Memorial School. Um, we're looking for a music teacher at Hills Garrison Elementary School. Um, there's 46 uh, paraeducator positions, as Mr. Gazdia mentioned. We did um, convert 12 of those from part-time paraeducator positions to full-time. Um, we also have an accountant position that is now on our sign that mm -hmm. we're looking for. Uh, there are some other staff positions that are posted on our website, but we are seeing um, some great great changes um, as far as from a hiring standpoint, but there's there's still some work to be done as far as hiring. Um, and like many districts um, throughout the state, uh, and WMUR has been highlighting this as well, there's certain areas that are critical shortage areas from a hiring perspective that uh, all districts, including Hudson, are, are still trying to find. Yeah, and I think just for the folks watching, the, the paraeducators um, aren't part of the teacher's contract. Correct. And so... Um, that's a separate contract, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, if we want to start to close that gap, we're going to have to address that the same way we address the teachers. And I think, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, that's, on, that's potentially on the ballot for this year. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. correct. Yep. So that uh, potentially, uh, if there's a tentative agreement, then that would move forward to the Hudson voters uh, in March. Um, I, I do encourage uh, to look at our website, our district website. Um, we also have been utilizing our signs both at Alvern High School and at uh, the SAU building, which have been very helpful and uh, in working with Chief Dion as well. Uh, I'm going to make a, a, a plug here for the Hudson Police <laughs> Department. We are looking for crossing guards um, as well. And we have found that uh, utilizing our signs at both Alvern High School and uh, at the district office has uh, increased uh, applicants um, for certain positions. And, and these are certain positions where utilizing our signs has been uh, very helpful at both the high school and at the district office. 
the yeah. high traffic areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely. That's, that's awesome. So you mentioned so you mentioned Library Street earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, there's there's some conversation I know we've had, and I don't know how much of it's been made public. Of you know, we have an early learning center with mm -hmm. Library Street and Dr. H.O. Smith, mm -hmm. and you know, if anyone who's driven around Hudson over the past five years, a lot of folks are moving in, the population's mm -hmm. going up. We now have full full kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what is what is the status of those schools? Are we are we nearing capacity? What is the, what's the is there a short term plan, a long term plan? What, what's going on with that? No, uh, great question. And actually, this week when I was outside uh, with uh, my traffic duty responsibilities, helping with bus duty, um, that question did come up a little bit as well. Um, we have created a early learning center uh, committee that is going to be studying. It's in the early infancy stages of looking at our ELC model um, for education. Um, at Library Street, uh, all the classrooms are full. We have roughly uh, close to 200 students. I think it, right now it's about 198, I think is the last number mm -hmm. I saw for kindergarten. And we're right around 200 students uh, for grade one um, for uh, Dr. H.O. Smith. Uh, so we're certainly seeing, um, which mirrors our enrollment study that we did last year, where we're seeing uh, increased uh, enrollment rates both at kindergarten, grade one, and, and now at grade two, so those mm -hmm. early elementary years. Um, as part of that committee, um, the two focus points will be uh, looking at research of other school districts and grounded in research, but also looking at um, you know, what is the best option for the Hudson community. Mm -hmm. um, the committee will be comprised of educators, uh, community members, administrators, um, and that'll be the, the first initial steps. But uh, at Library Street, um, the, the school is very full. Um, I, and if you've mm. been through that school, I'm more than welcome, to, well, along with Ms. McGuire, to provide a tour of the school. Part of the gym is also, the gymnasium is also used as our cafeteria. There are some areas that are also used um, for offices um, because, again, all of the classrooms are in use. Um, mm. So. Uh, enrollment is something we're watching very closely along with the school board and then looking at uh, a long-term plan. But as Mr. Gazdia mentioned as well, do we need to also look at something in the interim in the short term? Yeah, because you mentioned 200 students. And again, depending, you know, if you, if you know the schools, then you may be like, oh, 200 students is a lot. But mm -hmm. if you're not in the schools, you think, no, oh, well, you know, my school used to have 500 kids or 300 mm -hmm. kids. These schools weren't built for that. I think no. For both schools, the capacity is somewhere in the very low 200. So we're a spike away from, from not being able to fit students. And actually, one of the conversations I had with Ms. McGuire this week is if we were to see, and I know the school board has mentioned this as well, if we were to see an increase in enrollment, because, again, we do get a lot of online summer registrations that happen uh, during the summertime, and we needed to add an additional classroom. Both Mr. Gazdi and other school board members have asked us, Dan, mm -hmm. what would you do if you needed to find a classroom space? There is one space that we could utilize that is being used um, for different programs that is square footage-wise something that we mm -hmm. could do, but then we're displacing another uh, another classroom. And and then where would, where would we find that space? Um, so again, we're in the early stages of looking at, with a committee, um, what is going to be our long-term plan, um, making recommendations to the school board um, and to the community. Um, we're also looking at potentially listening tours with the community um, to get the community's input um, on what is the best plan going forward. And, and beyond, we're talking about space, beyond classrooms, and people think 200 divided by how many rooms, how many teachers, mm -hmm. you need to have specialists. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have um, an occupational therapist or a physical therapist Correct. or a speech uh, pathologist or whatever, and then you also have other things like your art, your music, mm -hmm. and like you said, the gym is like next to offices. So mm -hmm. there's a lot for the committee to uh, to go through and, to, and figure out as far as space and uh, just the, the square footage of that building and where do you put all these people. Correct. Yeah, and, and do you double double duty spaces, you know, we're probably already doing that. But uh, it's interesting, you have not been in a, you're not a working person in a school building. Sometimes you, you miss those other nuances that make it a very tight space to work in yeah. and for children to um, um, behave in. And that makes me think of how is the new um, 
playground going for the it, kids? It is going very well. We completed phase one of the uh, playground last spring in May. We had community members, school board members, Hudson Police Department members, uh, uh, Chief Dion, I know, was helping us out a little bit that day. Um, so phase one is complete. Um, there will be a second phase that will happen this fall um, as well. And as part of that phase, we'll be adding a little bit more playground equipment. Um, we're doing what I would say now is around the, the playground, some landscaping work. I have been talking with Ms. Labrie this week about adding a, a couple of benches. Um, but if you haven't had the chance, um, phase one of the playground uh, really came together wonderfully. And what I really liked, and I, I said this to a few community members, having worked in other school districts, is that the, many people from the community, PTA members, PTO community members, everyone was helping out. Um, I was there on Friday. Um, I was not building the playground, which was probably uh, a good thing, but I was helping with the mulch around the playground, which was perfect for me. Um, but it was, it was great to see over three days just, um, again, the community works together in Hudson, and having been here for a year, um, I really, again, attest and, and witnessed that firsthand. So it was Good great to, to see. You. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. So, early learning center sounds like that's going well and Lone Peach going well. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you were at the board of selectmen meeting to mm -hmm. close off Memorial Drive. Has that happened yet, or is that going to happen? Anything parents should should know? Anything like you know? But where are we with that? Yes, absolutely. So uh, as Mr. Gazdia mentioned, the first Board of Selectmen meeting, um, I believe it was August 8th, uh, Chief Dion and I were there. We mentioned to the Board of Selectmen um, restricting access to that road. As Mr. Gazdia mentioned, that that is mm -hmm. used as a public access, both mm -hmm. when school is in session, when school's not in session, during the summer months, uh, as mentioned, Google Maps does see that as a public road. And during when school is in session, um, you can have trucks um, and different vehicles going through there. Um, and again, in working with uh, Principal Bowen, uh, even when I first started, we worked on a memo. We presented it to uh, Police Chief Dion. I shared it with the school board. Uh, we presented that to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the next step really is uh, two um, public hearings that need to occur in the month of September. Um, during those two public hearings, that'll be an opportunity for the community to provide input, um, which is uh, the last steps. So we would be looking at, from a timeline perspective, um, probably that early October time frame pending those public hearings. We're similar to uh, at Library Street School um, and at the corner there of Library Street and where Dr. H.O. Smith School is, restricting access during certain mm -hmm. points of the day um, when school is in session and then a little bit beyond when school is in session when there's after school extracurricular mm -hmm. sports events going on. Uh, we'd be looking at probably 7, 7 a.m. to approximately 4, 4.30 p.m. Um, but again, with those public hearings, we'll get community input yeah. um, at those two public hearings in September and then hopefully have decision and move forward with a, a similar pattern to what we have at Library Street and Dr. H.O. Smith School. Um, but again, it's been a team effort. I really appreciate Police Chief Dion has uh, uh, provided some great recommendations for us in consideration when we talked about, um, you know, there's not a sidewalk there at HMS and there's students that are walking. We have students on bikes. And again, uh, it, it's, it's very busy there. It's, it's seen as a public road. So again, how do we, um, you know, not completely close off the road but restrict traffic access during certain points of the day yeah that's great um so one one thing uh another thing that was on the ballot last year was was the parking lot mm. and mm -hmm. we did that parking lot because uh, there were draining issues and all of that mm -hmm. and so um i'm fairly confident that that worked out really well it did but some people have noticed that a different parking lot didn't survive so well with the rain over at CTE. So if you yes. could just provide a quick update about about what happened there and sure. and you know um, you know the investment that needed to be made to to fix that. 
Sure, certainly. So um, at the school district office, which is also used during the day for parents, um, for parent pickup at the beginning and the end of the day at the school district office, that was repaved and reclaimed and then paved and uh, that work uh, was completed. And uh, that was a summer project, which is the time when you have to complete those summer projects. And then late June time frame, unexpectedly, and this has been the summer of a lot of rain, um, we, we received a lot of rain and that caused uh, a drainage issue at one of the, the culverts and drains um, towards the CTE entrance area um, where uh, the drainage, um, there, there was, the drainage just wasn't working properly, that it needed to be repaired. Unfortunately, because of that, it did cause part of that driveway um, to buckle and uh, a break once uh, the water had um, basically been alleviated from that area, the sun really from the heat and the water caused that road to buckle. Uh, we did find that there were some other drains that needed to be repaired just due to the, the volume of rainfall that uh, many towns, including Hudson, received. Um, so we worked with Principal Beals. Uh, we worked with a couple of different contractors, one of them being Continental Paving, also working with a company to uh, repair the, the drainage there and uh, come up with a solution where uh, going forward with heavy rainfall, the culverts um, will work in a manner that won't cause that to happen again. So that was an unanticipated, unexpected project. Um, certainly briefed uh, the school board quite a bit during the summer. Um, and working with Principal Beals, I became a little bit of an expert <laughs> on uh, driveways and drainage that I wasn't expecting. Um, but uh, overall, we did make those repairs. Um, it was complete before the start of the school year. Um, and going forward, uh, that should not be an issue. Awesome. So um, obviously, you know, everybody sends their kids to school to to learn, and mm -hmm. that's 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 the key, right? Academics is, is is a big deal, and I know we've you've made some changes in you know assessments. We talked about more computers coming potentially at the mm -hmm. elementary school level. I know we have, um, I believe it's called iReady, and different things like that. Can you just talk to some folks through at a very high level mm -hmm. some of the some of the things that we have that we're hoping will. Yeah. you know, really drive curriculum and instruction forward over the next couple of years? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, this year I highlighted both at our, our workshop days and uh, during the beginning of the year, three uh, priority areas, as Mr. Gazdia mentioned, um, focused on student learning. Um, the first is focusing on lifelong learning skills for students, those perseverance skills, uh, those presentation skills, those creative artistic skills. Uh, persevering through a performance uh, task, such as a, la a science lab, an inquiry-based uh, assessment, persevering through SATs and other assessments, um, and those lifelong learning skills from being a critical thinker, uh, a critical writer, um, and, and again, those are those life learning skills uh, that we were focusing on. Additionally, along with that, some instructional practices, as Mr. Gazdia mentioned, uh, iReady uh, provides uh, three benchmark assessments during the year, but also instructional lessons to support students in both reading and in mathematics. Um, we're also utilizing, as mentioned, uh, more technology in the classroom to support students. Uh, some of those instructional practices include uh, utilizing our Math and Focus program for grades kindergarten through eighth grade. Uh, we're in the third year of our Math and Focus program and uh, also a new uh, reading and, and writing program, Magnetic Reading, um, in grades three through five and Collaborative Writer in grades kindergarten through grade five. So those were programs we piloted last year, really working on those foundational skills in both writing, reading, and mathematics. Um, along with that, as mentioned at the district workshop day and mentioned by Mr. Gazdia, uh, using data to inform instruction, um, using data to uh, have those quality checks and those benchmark assessments. So if, if Dan is struggling in reading, uh, what are those academic interventions that are going to support Dan in reading or support Dan in mathematics or support Dan in writing? So uh, those are the pieces from an instructional standpoint that we're really focusing on uh, this year. And then our last priority area is really engaging with families in the community. Uh, district communication, school communication, those foundational schools, um, 
Gary has heard me say this before. Back when I was a principal, I would write a newsletter, and it would be three to five pages long. <laughs> but that's not the way that uh, communication works now. Communication needs to be uh, utilizing Facebook, utilizing our websites, using different communication schools, such as staff updates, superintendent updates, um, and different forms of media and communication um, to communicate with families. And so uh, our principals, uh, myself, our administrative team have made a strong commitment uh, to utilize those resources to communicate and engage with families so they can be our partners. So when we're, we're building a playground mm. or we're having a, a, a meet and greet event or we're having a curriculum night next week at Hudson Memorial School, that we're engaging with families and providing them those opportunities such as a STEM night or a STEAM night as well. Um, so, again, different ways that we can communicate um, and recognizing that communication has changed a, a bit since I was a principal. <laughs> so you don't have to join the PTO. You can continue with those coffee um, hours that you had mm -hmm. before they were very successful. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was nice on a couple opportunities last year, and we plan to do that again this year in working with Ms. Wolf, our Director of Strategic Engagement and Communications. Uh, of having some opportunities where the one in the wintertime I think of is cocoa and conversations. Yes, that's it. And then we did have one that was coffee yeah. and conversation with the superintendent yeah. as well. And that was just a nice opportunity mm -hmm. at, at different schools to engage families, uh, talk to them about how the school year was progressing, what were their, their hopes and goals and, and areas, I, as I always say to Mr. Gazdi and the school board, how can we continuous continuously improve, just like in any business, in any organization. How can we be better? Um, talk about our successes, but what are some areas that we can improve upon? And uh, one of those areas we talked about is our strategic plan and communication. So that has, has been part of those conversations with families, which has been, been very beneficial. Good to hear. So you mentioned STEM. Um, there, at our last board meeting, there was, there's a really cool... STEM event, I think it's September 20th, that's going to be at the Alvern CTE. Mm -hmm. um, can you just let folks know? Because I think there, there may be some, it sounds like it's going to be quite an event, quite a day. It will be quite, quite an event. Uh, I'm working with Dr. Farworth and our teachers at CTE. It, it's a great opportunity for families to, again, you know, showcase a lot of di different career pathways, both in science, technology, engineering, the arts and mathematics, and it really provides them an opportunity um, to see different career opportunities and different pathways. Um, as mentioned by Mr. Gazdia, we are really seeing uh, programs flourishing at our CTE, such as our welding program. We, we've hired two welding teachers. We've hired a second welding teacher. Wow. We've, we've hired um, an additional um, uh, mechanics teacher because there's so many engineering, um, computer science pathways, so many pathways that students can can take and this event showcases uh, more opportunities that we want to provide for families and also showcase a lot of the successes that we have. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, lots of great events planned this this fall and uh, I, again I think that's going to be a great event for us. Great. You know I'll, I'll let you have the last word but appreciate you coming on here yeah. and I think I'm, I'm excited for a good school year. Um, I think we've made a lot of good Good progress and a lot of good foundation in the past year, yeah. and um, be great to, to move things forward. But we we'll, we'll give you the last word. Absolutely. Uh, just wanted to say thank you for having me here today. I, I was really looking forward to it when I got the invite, Diane, from you. Um, just again, uh, I, I, we have our strategic planning committee, our ELC committee that will be starting. Um, looking at uh, long-term planning, long-term solutions is very important for the Hudson School District. Looking forward to uh, refreshing our strategic plan um, as we've completed a five-year plan and engaging communities and the families um, of different ways that we can you know, continue to move our school district forward and provide the very best education for our students. And uh, really looking forward to the school year. Uh, it's great to have the students back, and there's a lot of energy and excitement in the schools, which is great to see. It's nice having you here. We'll probably have you again for more <laughs> updates, because this is only the, like the first two months of school, it seems, and you're already uh, very, very busy. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. And Happy thank you, here. Gary, for your cool. participation today. I, I'm just going to end with telling you a few things. As I said, today is August 31st. It, I know this will be taped afterwards, but if you're watching this live, don't forget this, this is a long weekend for the schools. 
And on the 4th, Monday, of course, the town hall will be closed and the library also will be closed that day. But on the 5th, on Tuesday, after you have uh, dressed it up a little bit and recreated, don't forget, at the Hudson Community Center at 7 p.m., there's going to be a public hearing. And it's all about should the town hall be relocated. Think about it. Don't get on Facebook and complain. Come in person and talk. Ask questions. Get your answers. Give people ideas. Um, and then, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, Gary, but September 11th, obviously, the 9-11th observation of, um, will be at Benson Park at 6.30, as usual. And there are a couple of blood drives coming. September 12th will be by the police department, and se September 18th will be the library. I really urge people to go on HudsonNewHampshire.gov and get on that crier, C-R-I-E-R magazine, or the newsletter It's written so well. Um, it gives you everything that's going to be coming up in the month. So um, that's a great uh, piece of um, media for you to keep, in, keep involved in what's going on with the calendar in town for both the school and the, uh, the, the government. And talking about that, if you want to watch a school board meeting, do not go where you used to go. You have to mm -hmm. go to Channel... Eight. eight. Channel 8. And, of course, all the other things will be on Channel 6 and governments on Channel 2. But Channel 8 for all your school information. Because if you go to Channel, uh, the other channel, you may be buying things <laughs> by mistake. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's what's on there. I did it once and went, oh, I don't want that. I want the school board meeting. And I would be remiss if I did not mention that the uh, Board of Selectmen recently recognized Amy McMullen, for 20 years of service in the assessing department. I think it's important because we have some great people to make up this town, one of which is Amy. So thank you for watching, and we hope to see you soon on um, Working Together for Hudson. Bye-bye.